Welcome to the Nuffield Trust uh, Annual Summit thank and you. thank you for joining us. Um, I wonder if you could summarise for us the most significant problems that were identified by your inquiry into the events at Mid Staffordshire? Well obviously the most significant thing I found was the terrible experience of care so many patients mm. had and I had to sit and listen to that for a very long time and that will remain with me and the lesson I drew from that was everyone should listen to that sort of experience if they have anything to do with the health service. Um, the, the, the second thing was the way that the information which would have led people to realise that was happening was so diffuse that no one paid attention to it and they didn't pay attention to the little signs that could have told them as well. So what do you think the NHS needs to do to address those really profound failings in terms of oversight and regulation of hospitals? Well, there, there needs to be an individual and a collective change of attitude, in my view. Um, I, I think uh, it's not just management, it's doctors, nurses, probably everyone else who works in the system, uh, who, who concentrate on doing what I've called systems business, which is meeting targets, doing whatever they're told to do. It's not necessarily targets, but there are always these priorities. And forgetting why all these have been set, and, and all the time thinking, what impact is what I'm doing having on patients? And that's whether it's an individual nurse, or, or a manager, or the chief executive, or, or dare I say it, the Secretary of State. And how will we be able to tell if the NHS is making progress in addressing those failings? Well, I think the first point will be, are we seeing a greater degree of openness and honesty about what's actually going on? And that could be, uh, firstly, in relation to the admission of actual mistakes which have harmed patients, that's perhaps the priority, but, but actually much more honest information about what the service can and can't do, but about how individual parts of the service are performing so that we all can tell whether it's performing well or whether it isn't. I, I think that will be, be the test. And from uh, all the work you undertook as part of the inquiry, what did you conclude about the role of local bodies that aim or claim to represent patients and the public? Well, I, I think we've had a history over a number of years of, of, of totally ill-equipped bodies, by which I mean groups of well-meaning local citizens who, who are neither given the training nor the support uh, nor the resources, in fact, to do the job they were expected to do. Uh, and I think that that needs to be changed. So they need to have resources, they need to have professional backup. Because it seems to me that patients and the public are excellent sources of information, obviously about what they want and what they expect, and what they find in terms of experience. What they're going to be less good at, unless you give them some help, is how you solve those problems and make, make improvements. Now your report has an awful lot to say about the culture of the NHS, the, the NHS as a whole, but also of, of, of management. Um, what do you think needs to be done for that culture to become much more healthy and to be open? Well, I, I think we've got to make it much easier for people to raise concerns and to get something done about them and to make it much more difficult for them not to. So there are two sides to, to, to that equation which is why I've said there should be a duty of, of candour, there should be a duty on managers to be honest and truthful with uh, regulators. And I'm afraid of the other side, that, that I think there should be some, uh, serious sanctions when managers or, or leaders lie to boards or deceive them, uh, or where colleagues of, of say, nurses or, or, or doctors willfully obstruct them trying to tell the truth about things. Uh, that's happened, certainly was happening at Mid Staffordshire. Uh, and so I want a sort of carrot and stick approach, if you like, but um, you, I, I think you do need both. Now, if you were to be asked back in, say, five years' time to examine NHS uh, commissioning, regulation and, and management, the, the things you were asked to look at in this inquiry, what would you hope to find? Well, I, I think the test would have to be uh, not going around organisations like commissioning boards or groups, but actually to go to wards and, and talk to patients and observe what is happening. And if I found wards where uh, nursing leaders were, were leading by example, their, their staff were coming up with ideas of how to improve things, where 
patients were, uh, if they raised concerns, those were welcomed and they were taken with the staff in terms of making the relevant Im improvements, uh, where we could know almost precisely, uh, as possible anyway, what the performance of individual wards and teams were, and we could look the, all that up on the internet, mm -hmm. I think we'd have done the job. And you've, you've devoted a significant uh, chunk of your career these last few years to the two inquiries into Mid Staffordshire. Just finally, what are your sort of reflections on that? How are you going to look back on this time? Well, I, I've spent longer than I care to admit uh, as a lawyer dealing with medical issues, but uh, for the last three years have been an absolute eye-opener for me in terms of the reality of one unfortunate part of, uh, of the health service. Uh, and I think the lesson for me is uh, what we, it's listening. And it's listening to difficult information, often from people who are very distressed uh, uh, and have difficulty in putting things over clearly. And that requires patience and it requires insight. And it's perhaps the most challenging thing that anyone has to do is to listen to bad news about yourself. And I think doctors have to do that, nurses have to do that and say to their organisations. But that's what I've learned is the need to listen. Thank you.